Here it is, the new CDJ3000 from Pioneer DJ. I have all the information you need to know about this long awaited release. Welcome back, Jamie Hartley here from Crossfader and today is an exciting day. The new CDJ3000 has finally dropped from Pioneer DJ. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the things that you need to know about this new product. New features such as eight hot cues, touchscreen display, jog wheel display, new MPU for faster loading, higher sound quality, key syncing, touch cue, touch preview, stacked waveforms, and more. But before we get into that, let's talk about connectivity. Now, first of all, there is no CD drive anymore. So you can see that's gone, it's now a multiplayer. And how does that connectivity work? Well, we've still got the option to have a USB drive or SD card plugged in here or here with music exported from the Rekordbox software. There is a USB 3 port on the back where you can connect Rekordbox on your laptop to. This is a hardware unlocked device, so you don't need a paid subscription. It will unlock Rekordbox. If you do want to stream, unfortunately it is just within the Rekordbox software. There is no onboard streaming in this unit, just like there is no internet or Wi-Fi. Now I'm hoping that changes. I talk about this at the end of the video, so stick around for some thoughts around that. Moving on though, we have now a gigabit ethernet port. So you can connect up to six players. You get super fast loading of tracks on players that don't have USB plugged in and are just linked, which is a really nice new update. You can see we've got the RCA audio out and digital audio out. As you can see, there is only one audio out, so we don't have that dual layer. I know it's something a lot of people were waiting on, so I'm just making that clear right at the start for anyone that was waiting for that feature. It looks like we've just got the one layer as it stands. Now, there's also a locking IEC port as well, which is really useful. It means there's no accidental power outages with the cable being pulled out. It locks in place, which is a really, important update to this product. Some additional ways you can connect. So Serato users, I know it's gonna be one of the questions, can I connect using HID? You will be able to, upon release it's not available yet, but yes, it is definitely coming. Also, if you use the Rekordbox app on your iPhone, you can connect that directly to the CDJs as well and play music directly from your iPhone through the CDJs using the Pro DJ link. You can also, if you've got an ethernet port on your computer and want to use export mode of Rekordbox with Pro DJ Link, you can still do that as well using the link cable. So now that we've got connectivity covered, we need to dive in to those all important performance features, essential upgrades, and things that are going on under the hood. The first thing to notice on the new CDJ3000 is this new nine inch touch display. It's 150% brighter than the previous model. So hopefully that will help in any bright environments, daytime parties, daytime gigs and festivals. As you can see, we can touch anywhere on this display. So I've just loaded in the source, which is my USB drive, and I can toggle through artists, album, track, key, playlist, history, matching and folder all down the left hand side. You can scroll up and down like this and scroll up and down through playlists. You can tap on a playlist to enter that playlist. I can scroll up and down and now you can see we have a preview waveform which is really useful. This is a new feature on the CDJ 3000s. If you have the 3000s linked to your DJ mixer, if you press the Q link button on the mixer, you can now take your headphones and just hold on the preview waveform and you might be able to hear that. And it's now previewing through the headphones. And this doesn't play out of the master channel. This is just for the DJ to listen via the link cue. That's a really neat feature. Now we could scroll up and down and just load a song in. Once the song's loaded, you can see that it's got the new three band colored waveform. This is taken from the latest update of Rekordbox and it's nice to see on the display here. You can scroll in and out of the waveform as standard to make it bigger and smaller. We can change that waveform color if you prefer the original one by clicking the shortcut button. And here we have some shortcuts available. We can go back to RGB for example, or just blue. On three band, there's a new option with the waveform as well. We can have it either in the left or in the center. So if I put it back to the center, you'll see the playhead is here in the center. But for example, you don't need to know what's going on here in the track, you want to know what's coming. So I could press shortcut and go left, 
Now you'll notice it's placed over here. And now if I zoom out, you can see much clearly, much more clearly what is coming in the song rather than what has been. So that's a really small little update that some people might find really useful. Seeing as we're talking about customizing this display, if we go back to browse, you can tap on this button here to make this font size bigger and smaller, which is great. You can tap this button here to change the secondary column. So we could have the artist as a secondary column and we can customize this. We could have our DJ play count so we can see our most popular tracks or you could just have it as default and show the entire track. Obviously you can organize these playlists by BPM or key and you just tap the top of the playlist uh, column header and you'll see it organizes it by BPM or key. We still have the track filter option. So underneath, if I hold this, I can edit the filters and I can say I want to filter this playlist by the master player. So whatever is the master player and a plus or minus 6% variation and a similar key that will mix in key. Now, if I go back off this and just tap track filter, you'll notice these are all the tracks now that will mix harmonically and are a close BPM to my current master player. So that's still there. Along the top of the screen, we have a few extra buttons now. So you'll notice we also have playlist and search. So if you're playing a song and you want to quickly go back to a playlist, you can tap here and go to your playlist column and look through your playlists. Or you could think, I know what song I want to play next. Let's just search for it using the keyboard. So that's really neat to have those extra buttons here. Lastly, you can change the brightness of the screen via the shortcut menu. You can change the brightness directly there with the touch screen. You can change the jog LCD brightness there as well. You can change things like the quantized beat value and the beat jump value all within this shortcut menu. Now something really cool and new on the CDJ 3000s is the waveform and phase meter. Now there is a waveform option. What does that mean? Well, this is really cool. If I get a song playing, let's say on the opposite side, this is now the master deck and you can see on my next deck, it's showing the waveform from this playing deck. So it's showing player one's waveform on player two. And this means you can now use this waveform if you want as a visual reference when matching the tracks. That's a really cool feature. For this to work, obviously it needs to be linked via the link cable. Um, all the CDJs will need to be linked to show that waveform and it will just show the master deck. So whichever you have selected as the master, you'll see it now swaps over to the opposite side. And that's a really cool feature. Another really neat new feature is the touch cue system. So if you have a DJ and you're playing back to back with a friend, you can actually preview later on in the song that they're playing. So you know what drops about to come up for this to work again. We just have to make sure the link cue is turned on on your mixer and that it's all linked together. And then if I just hold this to the microphone, if I hold anywhere on the waveform, it starts playing that waveform from that point in the track. So I could have this track playing. I might be lining up my next song, but I just want to preview what this last drops like. I can just skip towards the end and the audience can't hear this. Only you can hear this in the headphones. And this works on both sides. So it's like a live preview of the song whether it's a song that's playing or the song you're mixing in, you can live preview it without having to skip through the track. And that's really useful for any DJs going back to back that they want to just check out the other DJ's song. Now, obviously on something like the DJM V10 mixer, there are two headphone outputs as well. And one of those headphone outputs has that link cue option. So you can preview it even with two separate headphones. Obviously on the DJM 900 Nexus 2, there is only the one headphone option. So if you've got two headphones plugged in, you're both going to hear the preview. So something to bear in mind. Now let's have a look at some of the performance features and the design as well, because a few things have moved since the previous model. Notably, there are now eight hot cues all underneath the display here. Before we had them to the left hand side, now they're under the display in one horizontal line. Now ergonomically, how does that work? Well, you could have your hands like this. Just bearing in mind you don't touch the jog wheel if you're going to do lots of finger drumming with the hot cues. If you're just mixing, it's very easy to just reach over and tap a hot cue. It feels really natural. Um, you've also got to think about if you were going crazy on the hot cues, you could, if you've got a big enough hand, rest your hand on top and hit them like this. 
So that can work just depending how wide your hand can stretch because I know a lot of DJs used to rest their hand here and hit the hot cues with their thumb. So that can almost still be achieved. The hot cues are really tactile, they're plastic buttons and let me just set some, as you can see here, we've got eight hot cues. If you want to turn quantize on, the quantize button is now located here and you can change the quantize value as said just in the shortcut menu there. To delete the hot cues, hold this call or delete button, and it's as simple as that. These are just hot cues, they are not performance pads, so they just work as standard as a hot cue. You set a point in the track and you can jump to that point, or you can set a loop and save the loop in the hot cue bank. Moving down, we have the standard in and out loop functions, and underneath that we now have a new 8B auto loop. So that will automatically set an eight beat loop. And we've also got a four beat loop dedicated button. You'll notice it says half and two times underneath. If you're on four beats, for example, I can press it again and it will half and I can keep halving it or I can double it. You'll notice the auto loops come up, the beat loops come up on the display as well. So it's again, it's a touch screen. And this is a shortcut menu that I can hide or make reappear via this toggle here. And then we now have polyrhythmic loops. So these are kind of like odd numbered loops. There's a number two, which is page two on the display. And if I switch to this, I can now do a three beat loop, for example. Three quarters of a beat, five beats. So you've got all these odd numbered loops. And to exit, again, just hit the exit button as standard. Underneath that, we have the beat jump controls. Now, beat jump was featured on the previous model, but this is way more tactile to have buttons rather than a touchscreen. The touchscreen is still there via the shortcut menu, so you can beat jump four beats left and right. You go into page two, beat jump 64 beats, for example. However, we've now got dedicated buttons, so I can just beat jump and toggle through the song. You can do it while it's playing. Now, you can see the value of the beat jump in this bottom left corner. It says beat jump 32 beats. Rather than going into the beat jump menu, to change that, what I like to use is this call button. If we hold call and then press beat jump, we can change the value. We can go up and down, eight beats, four beats, two beats, one beat, half beat, and go back up. So this isn't determined to what your auto loop, so if I went on to eight beats here, it doesn't automatically switch the beat jump to eight beats as well. They are separate features, which is something that I think is really neat. And if you've got a loop set, you can also beat jump that loop as well. So I can skip it forwards. And now you can see we're skipping the loop forwards using beat jump. As you can see, slip mode is now featured next to quantize. When I tap slip mode, the roll loops come up and I can hold the screen to loop. Loop the track and then it will jump to where it would have been previously. We can see slip is active on the center LCD display. Hot cues will also work with slip mode on. So if I just set up a hot cue. And obviously we can pause the track, play the track and do all the usual things that slip mode allows us to do. One of the best new features, for my opinion, is the new key shift and key syncing options. So on the touch display, we have the key shift option. This brings up a touch plus a minus, so we can shift the track up and down by semitones. And it shows you the next key that you're going to go to. I've got the Camelot notation displaying, but you can have the um, usual notation, like E minor, A minor, that kind of thing. You can tap the middle to reset. And this would be cool for like build-ups. You could do something along those lines. If you are about to play your next track, for example, let me just start playing this one. And I go to key shift. These tracks don't currently mix in key. Now I can start scrolling through this and trying to find the right key. And you'll notice it turns green when I need to press it to get it to the right key. So I've gone down by two and I go down one more semitone. And now these two are both at two A and will mix in key. Now there is a much easier way to do this. I can just hit the key sync dedicated button. And you'll notice it key syncs it to the closest key. Now I had to go down three semitones to get it to that key to match. However, I didn't try going up and you'll notice that we've now gone to one A. Now, one of the downsides I would say to this is that you don't know what, how many steps, you don't know very easily, should I say, how many steps you've taken up or down 
from the original key. But Pioneer have basically used the engine inside of here to try and keep it as close as possible. If I go into key shift now, you might be able to see that it's just grayed out. There's two bars that are grayed out, which means I've gone down by two semitones, I think, or up by two semitones. I've gone up by two semitones, and if I just hit master tempo or turn key sync off, you'll notice it jumps back. So if I went up two semitones manually, it's the same as what we just achieved. But again, like I said, it's a bit confusing as to whether you've gone up by two semitones, down by two semitones. It doesn't have a very clear display when you hit key sync as to how many semitones it's gone up or down to, to then reset it if you decided to reset it. So great new feature. Just be wary that you need to be careful what you're mixing together. It always tries to keep it within one or two semitones with the new processes that are inside the CDJ 3000s. Something else that's been redesigned and redeveloped is the jog wheel. Now it looks similar. However, the top is all one plate. So there isn't like a separate bit of glass in the center for the display. This is all feels like a nice all in one display across the top. It's very responsive and it's very smooth. The profile's really nice and it definitely feels slightly different to the previous model. It feels a bit more grounded, a bit more intact in the player and the unit. And yeah, it's just, it's really responsive. You can see we've got the center display now as well. So all it does is it shows the album artwork, it shows the playhead, whether you've got vinyl mode or CDJ mode turned on or off, and whether you've got slip mode on or off, and whether you've got beat sync on or off. Now, as far as I can tell from this initial release, you can't change what's in the center display. I'd love it in the future if they added the option to have your BPM in there or to be able to change what information is shown up in there. I know on other players, we've got the mini waveform there and things, but from what I can see in the utilities, which I'm about to show you, you can't change what's displayed here as yet. Moving over to the utilities. If I just hold the menu button, we can see what's in the settings. Now, I would have thought there would be more settings upon release, but again, this is something that could be updated in the future. So we've got DJ setting, we've got all the standard stuff like your quantized beat value, beat jump values, um, well, the automatic beat jump value that you have it set on, how the hot cues are loaded, whether you've got hot cue color, I'm gonna turn that on because it's much nicer. Um, and then we've got things like your vinyl speed adjust because we've just got the one knob here for touch and break. So you can have it on either touch and release, touch or just release. You can go down, we've got the display brightness, the jog LCD brightness. We've got screen saver and touch display calibration if obviously the display starts to act a bit strange. The display indicator, we've got slip flashing, on air display, jogging brightness, jogging indicator. So there's not much new going on here. Again, the pro DJ link, we can choose what number the player is. We've got the system info and we've got some more info such as the version number and serial number, etc. So there isn't much new in the utility there and in the settings. I thought you might be able to change some of those preferences in the way that this reacts, especially things like the center display. Hopefully that's coming in the future. This leads me on to how this player has been built and one of the biggest new features, which is the MPU. It's the microprocessor that they've put into this player. It's totally different to the previous model and it allows for much better sound and it allows for much faster workflow and it allows for much quicker updates of what Pioneer are saying. So let me just show you something. If I were to set loads of hot cues on this track, if I were to set some memory points, let's say, I'm gonna set some memory points throughout. Now, one of the biggest things for DJs is that load time. And this is where this new MPU really shines and what it means to have a more powerful processor inside. If I go onto a different song, um, let me just find where I'm at. So we've got drip drab loaded. If I load a different song, now, when I load this one back on, watch how fast it loads all of those hot cues. They're there. I'm ready to go. I can get to my memory point straight away. So it's instant. It's like using a laptop, which is amazing. And that is one of the biggest updates, I will say, is that was noticeable straight away. I used to hate having to wait for those hot cues to load on the previous models. And there you can see, even with high quality audio files, it's still super snappy and super fast 
to load all those hotcues. So that's a big plus from me. Now this new MPU also means that you get much better sound quality. This is the first player where they have 96 kilohertz and 32 bit float. So what it does is it basically takes even tracks that aren't of that quality. It allows you to hear all the details within the music. So if there's subtle differences in some of the bass frequencies, if there's really atmospheric parts of the song on a loud sound system, you're gonna hear all of that detail because the CDJ is gonna bring it all through from that digital file. And the last point about the new processor in there is that because it's so powerful, Pioneer DJ have said that it allows them to add more features and bring updates much easier in this model. So I'm hoping what we see here isn't going to be what we see in a year or two years time. It's going to get updates and get developed because as you're already aware, this doesn't have streaming involved. It doesn't have streaming built in. You would have to plug in a laptop to the CDJs and use Rekordbox 6, for example, which this is a hardware unlocked device for. So you don't have to pay a subscription. You can just plug Rekordbox in and it fully unlocks the software but you'd have to stream through the record box software using HID mode. Now, I'd love to see streaming added. I don't know if it's coming, but this is something that I was expecting to come on the new CDJs and it's not built into the player. I hope what they mean by is updates can be added much easier is that they can add things like streaming in there. We've got a hundred gigabit ethernet port on the back, which surely is going to unlock internet at some point. It's not there right now, but hopefully, fingers crossed, in the future, we get some of these updates coming. Before we move off and talk about my opinions, I just want to highlight one of my little gripes about this update. And again, I hope this can be added in a future update and changed in a future update, but the auto emergency loop on the old CDJs, if you accidentally took out a USB stick or the link connection was lost, it set a four beat loop as an emergency loop and it was one of the most annoying things. Now, it looks like that is still there. I'm on the play without the USB. If I just take out the link cable, we will see it kicks in. Cannot play track, some player functions limited and you can see there's a four beat emergency loop playing there now. And you can't do much more with that. I can't exit that loop because that's all that's stored in the player. So that's just something I wanted to show because it, that is one of the downsides I've found about the CDJ3000. Now, I just want to run through some of my thoughts about this and I'd love to open a conversation with all of you viewers about what you think about it too. So the next natural question that everyone's going to have is how much does all of this cost? Well, it comes in in dollars at $2,299 a player. We've got the conversions of the other retails for euros and pounds there as well. Now, obviously, straight away, you're gonna think that is very expensive, and it is very expensive. If you want a full new CDJ3000 setup, even with a DJM V10 or a 900 Nexus 2, you are spending a lot of money. However, you've got to bear in mind that these are not designed for the bedroom DJ. These are designed, realistically, for festivals big clubs are designed for some of the biggest stages around the world. And you can tell that Pioneer have built them in that way. They can't reinvent the wheel. They've got to just update and reiterate what is tried and tested with the Pioneer DJ CDJ range because all of those artists that should be out working around in festivals around the world, hopefully when COVID comes to an end and festivals start again. When they're all working around the world, they want some familiarity. They don't want to have everything changed in front of them. It's got to be small, smaller iterations because it's a tried and tested feel. It's a tried and tested workflow. So Pioneer couldn't reinvent the wheel with this. And it's definitely aimed at the clubs and the venues and the festivals purchasing them. It's not aimed at the home user to buy for their bedroom. Now, what I will say is with this being released, it makes the XDJ XZ an amazing setup for at home because it really brings all of this to an all-in-one unit and it makes much more sense for a home user or even a prosumer. The pros, however, the people that can afford to charge thousands and thousands of dollars or pounds for their gigs to go and play for an hour, then they can afford to spend the money on this kind of equipment, the equipment that they expect to see in front of them when they rock up to the club or festival as well. So that's something to bear in mind. 
I personally do think it is a very high price point, but I can see where Pioneer have priced this and potentially some of the reasoning for that. Now, a big part of playing on DJ equipment is the feel of it and the familiarity. Like I just said, you don't want to alienate the big artists when they're rocking up to their gigs with a total different layout. Now, everyone here at Crossfader are religious users of the CDJ range, right from CDJ 1000s, right up to now this, the CDJ 3000. And we've used them all and we've used them in real environments on a weekly basis in clubs. So we're very familiar with how they feel and the tool that it provides to us to play music. And we have all played on the CDJ 3000s here and we all feel very much at home instantly. And they do feel amazing to play on. Granted, they might not have streaming in there. It might not have performance pads where you can have slicers and things like that. But it does have those essential things laid out really well and it feels very natural and very great to play on. So I will say it's a lot of fun to play on them and they feel great. Do we want more performance pads? Do we want more features loaded in there? Hopefully we get some new things coming in soon with the updates. I keep pushing for streaming. I think that's the future. Definitely in the next 10 years, if we're going to wait for the CDJ 4000 in five or 10 years time, we need streaming already available in this. So I'm pushing for that. But beyond that, like I said, they feel great. And I I'm really happy and comfortable playing on them and so is everyone else in the office. So I guarantee if you are a Rekordbox USB user, you're going to get on these and feel right at home straight away because it's familiar and it's natural. I know there are going to be lots of comments and I really want to see what everyone in the industry thinks of this brand new CDJ3000. There hasn't been a release like this since we even started Crossfader. So this is a big thing and we're so grateful to Pioneer for sending us this unit to do an official review on. We're obviously really pumped to play on these. We've got mixes going out as well, so make sure you check out the performances and the mixes from all of the team here at Crossfader. And I just wanna say a thank you to everyone that's watched this video, that's subscribed to our channel, and I hope you stick around for more videos like this very soon.